folks, welcome back. This is, uh, I think, part five of session 13. Uh, we're discussing clustering techniques here. And now we're going to talk a little bit about hierarchical clustering. So classically, there are two different approaches to perform um, this type of, uh, of clustering in, in which you take your data points and either you go up or you go down in the sense that you go up and then you, you consider each of these data points as individual points and then you want to join them or you go down in such a way that you consider this as a cluster and then you want to cut them and produce new clusters as needed. So these bottom-up approaches are called agglomerative clustering and are really used uh, a lot in different, in different uh, kind of areas and a lot of different software packages they have already kind of pre-packaged and really, really ready to use. Um, so what they do is that they take uh, these points and then they join them by similarity and then they go forming these clusters and then they join them one by one as, as they go up. And then what you have here is what is called a dendogram in which you have different levels with different amount of clusters. So depending on what do you want, you just kind of cut it here and then you select your clusters and then you have your data. And you have one cluster here, another one here, and another one here. So depending on what do you want to do, then you just perform different levels to, to perform this, this cut here. And this is called agglomerative clustering. And then uh, the whole trick is uh, de defining how do you compute the similarity between the data points. In a similar way, you can go down and then you can assume that this whole data is just a single cluster over here. So if this is just one big cluster, how can you cut it, right? So if you use similar ideas from here, you should obtain the same, the same clusters. But now you have some advantage because in the bottom-up approach, in the agglomerated clustering, you just only have access to each of these data points to perform the cut, the, the join, right? Now that you're performing cuts, you can use the whole data set or all the data points to perform those uh, checkups. So in theory, it should be more robust than the agglomerative one. So when you are going down, what you're going to do is that you're just going to cut it and then divide these sets depending on, on some similarity. Now you have these three points that belong to one cluster and these two that belong to a different one. And again, you just cut it and then you just continue with the process of, uh, the process of cutting these points and depending on, on, on how uh, they define each of those points, you obtain different, different uh, clusters here, all up to the, up the, the point in which you obtain all your individual clusters, right? So again, you have these uh, bottom up agglomerative clustering and top-down uh, divisive clustering. And this is uh, the traditional way of, of thinking about these hierarchical clustering, but there is one approach in which we can try to push our ideas of uh, Bayesian uh, inference here, Bayesian learning. And this is called Bayesian hierarchical clustering. And uh, what we want to do here is um, try to find some partitions uh, of the data such that we can maximize the probability of the data belonging to, to these partitions. So what we are going to do effectively is to use Bayesian testing and produce some hypotheses and then use those hypotheses based on base rule and then uh, using that, selecting which ones are more likely to to belong to it. So if we just try to formalize this a little bit, uh, this set of data here is going to be my D. So D is going to be this, this set of data. And I'm going to call DI my points in the in some subtree, okay? Points in the subtree. Let's call it TI. And I will have some variable here, um, ij, whether I should join or merge, hence the m, the trees 
I and J. Okay, and zero if I shouldn't merge them. Okay, and now I want to have the responsibility here, similar to the expert uh, lecture here. What is the the probability of assigning my data to a particular cluster? In this case, joining two subtrees. So this probability here is the probability of the data, of the merged data, right? The dij, given that I merge them, so this is equal to one, times the probability of merging them. So what is my prior, right? What is the prior of merging two, two trees? Uh, again, if you want, you can have some uninformative priors and you just have all are the same, equally likely. Or you can have some more fancy way of producing these. We are going to discuss this in a little bit. And now, since this is the responsibility, we need to normalize this. So this should be uh, the probability of my merge data given my merge tree such that this merge data and merge given the merge tree is the sum of these two states. So it is the probability of the merge data given that I merge them times its prior plus the probability of the data given that I didn't merge them. So I'm considering the other the other possibility, right? Uh, times the prior that I did not merge those two things over there. So this will give me um, the responsibility of that merge data here. And that is uh, really useful because now I can use that and kind of threshold it once I compute it. And if it is above some threshold, boom, I just join them I, and I can continue the process to, to produce this. So the whole idea is that I'm going to do this bottom-up approach in which I'm going to start with my data. And then I want to compute these probabilities over here and then each data may start in its own tree. And then I want to start joining those trees if they hold into this responsibility over here. Um, Okay, now the thing will be how I define these other probabilities, right? So I already discussed about the, the prior here, but now what about the other one? So when I am merging the data, I'm going to assume that this, this data comes from the same model, right? So if the data is coming from the same model, then my probability of this merge uh, data here, given that I merge them, is going to be um, the marginal probability or the marginal likelihood given the model, right? So my model here is going to be latent because I don't know what model is producing each of these data points. But I know, for instance, when I'm inside one of these subtrees, like these two data points should be generated by the same model. And when I'm in this subtree, all these trees should be generated by the same model. So my model in each of the subtrees uh, should be general enough to have high likelihood for that data. But again, my model is latent, so I'm going to just marginalize with respect of all possible models that I have. So this is going to be the integral of my data. So this is the multiplication of all the x ends inside my joint data. And the probability of this x end given the parameters of that subtree times the probability of the subtree given lambda times d theta, right? So you have this probability of, of belonging to the model because you define what is the likelihood and what is the shape of, of this data. And then you can select some, some posterior of, of theta such that it is a conjugate prior of this and then you can solve this integral in a closed form. If, if for some reason you know the distribution of this data and that distribution does not have a nice uh, conjugate prior because of reasons, then you can resort to some other way of solving this integral as we discussed before. For instance, you may go and want to do sampling or you may want to do rational inference to try to solve this issue here. But again, that is a, a different story. So now you have that probability over here. And then the other case is that these two things are not coming from the same model. That means like they should be uh, independent from each other, right? 
So if they are independent, I may be in the case, for instance, in here, in which these two data points come from different trees. So now the likelihood of these um, two data points is just the individual multiplication of, of their own likelihoods given the tree. So this should be the probability of my data given the tree in which that data is, right? And the same for J at TJ. So now if they're, again, if they come from the same tree, they should be dependent. And if they come from different trees, they should be independent. Now, what you do is like you have these values because you are constructing it bottom up. So now you have these access to this P of, P of Xn, as I was telling before. So now you can simply go and compute the likelihood. And since you are also finding the thetas here, you can you can use them to, to compute it because you can also do the same thing over here. You can uh, compute what is the likelihood given the tree um, to, to find that. Um, so now, excellent, we have some nice way to, to find in the values, but uh, we don't have some particular priors here. So we don't have um, these, this information. So if we go back to our Dirichlet process, we can think about how to merge the Dirichlet process with our Bayesian hierarchical clustering here. And if we compute the marginal over the partitions that we had before in that Dirichlet process, you will end up with the following. So the probability of the data in the kth uh, sub tree here is uh, equal to some uh, dx from all possible partitions times the probability, oh, sorry, uh, b here. Uh, I cannot read my notes. <laughs> so b in all possible partitions times the probability of that partition, how likely that partition is, times the probability of the data in that partition. So what I'm doing now is like, instead of just computing um, the similarity between these two, what I'm doing is, what if I just select all possible ways of dividing the data and then joining that data? Now we will have in this case two up to n um, minus one different ways of joining this data, right? And I'm going to go through all these possibilities here. This is going to be my new, and I'm going to go from all different partitions and then the um, probability of, e of a particular node, it's the data that end up in that partition, but then weighted from all possible ways that I have to select that particular data over here, okay? Now, uh, what is the likelihood of this um, partition, right? Oh, sorry, what is the probability of this partition? So it is going to be some alpha parameter that I have times the number of data points that end up in this, uh, in this partition times the multiplication of L from one up to MV, my amount of data, and a gamma of NLB over my gamma NK plus alpha over gamma alpha. So this comes from the Dirichlet that we had before. So again, if you remember, like we're just counting here uh, from the from the uh, given parameters, and my probability of the data in that partition here um, is the multiplication from L equal to one up to MB of the probability of the data that it is in cluster L and in partition B. So I wanna go through all my, my uh, possible clusters. And then from the, those clusters that I'm creating, I want to go and generate uh, the likelihoods for those smaller partitions and then just multiplying those likelihoods over here. So again, this whole uh, solution here comes from the marginalization over partitions of my Dirichlet process. And it happens that this here, it's uh, very similar to what we had in the uh, Bayesian hierarchical clustering, such that 
uh, this thing over here, it's equivalent to my uh, dk given tk, right? So it is equal to this thing over here. In this case, I'm just assuming that I have uh, two partitions, right? Like I merge them or not. In this case, I'm just uh, going through the whole possible partition, just selecting uh, the ones that, that, that the, not selecting ones that matter, but kind of averaging over all possible partitions just to get the data, probability at the end. And using this, we can finally obtain what are the values. So my pi k comes as my prior here, uh, mk equal one. And then uh, for each of my leaves, I can select my degree as the alpha parameter and my pi i as one. So I can initialize it for each of the leaves. So for each data point. And now, uh, for each internal node, for each of those new clusters that I'm going to be creating, what I'm going to do is to select them based on that process that we just defined. So my degree, uh, sorry, my, my, my distance here is going to be uh, alpha times the gamma of the count for that cluster. So for that point, yeah, the cluster, right? Uh, the uh, D k alpha j, right, and um, my pi k is equal then to the alpha and the gamma of nk over my dk. So I have a way of, of checking this and adding the, the new data based on these uh, new forms that we have. And this is really nice because now I can use my digital process as a way to marginalize all the possible uh, partitions. And um, based on this more general process, I can reach in, in a way of computing the likelihood and the um, values of assigning this, um, uh, this likelihood between the points and then joining them as needed. And in this case, if you remember, we have two free parameters, right? We have the alpha and the lambda parameters. And we can, as before, uh, compute them and learn them by backpropagation or gradient descent. And in this case, since we also have the tree, it is uh, much, much easier because I don't need to just do uh, whole batches and process all the data, but I can just simply um, traverse my tree that I was forming and using the tree to do the backprop over the parameters that we are solving. So that is a really nice way of, of using this. So as you can see, uh, having these Bayesian frameworks can help us to, to produce more complex and robust ways of uh, working with our data. So hopefully you can use those in other types of methods to not just clustering.